This is Brad A. Milford with the Unlimited Business Wisdom Podcast, where leaders, seasoned entrepreneurs, and business owners share their wisdom. It's straight to the point to respect people's time, and because we know knowledge and wisdom turn to business possibility, and possibility mixed with support and action become reality. In this podcast, we discuss leadership, sales, marketing, operations, team development, quality, and finance to drive sustainable results and everlasting impact to make the world a better place. Thanks for joining us. Antonio, great to have you on the Unlimited Wisdom Podcast. Great to have you here. Hi, Brad. Thanks ever so much for the invitation. I'm a big fan, so I do appreciate you asking me over. I'm I'll endeavor to make it interesting enough for your readers and listeners. I love it. And Tony, if you'd be so kind, would you be willing to share with the people watching and listening a little bit about who you are and what you do? Sure. So I'm Antonio Garrido. That probably, this probably isn't the accent you were expecting, but I'm the uh, founder with that name at any rate. So I'm the founder and, and author of My Daily Leadership. So My Daily Leadership is the book. Uh, it's also the leadership development program. Uh, we're a leadership development company. We work pretty exclusively with business leaders who in the main are doing pretty well, right? But also recognize that they're maybe not quite the finished article. They kind of realize that neither themselves or their people or their business are really playing to their full potential. That kind of shows up, I guess, in either a bonkers, hectic work-life balance, right, which is completely out of balance, maybe stumbling from one crisis to the next, having maybe too high staff turnover, perhaps, or more importantly, the bottom right-hand corner of the spreadsheet every month, which kind of uh, displays the retained profit number isn't quite what they want it to be. So, and we don't let that happen. So I guess that's that's sort of who we are and who we work with. That's great. I love that. Very succinct, very clear. Oh, nice. Um, Good. <laughs> high level leaders who are, you know, maybe frustrated or yeah. Yeah, struggling, mm-hmm. wanting growth, not the finished product. I mean, yeah. I think that could be said for all of us, though, isn't that the truth? I, yeah, I guess I, I did a talk just before COVID, uh, like about two weeks before COVID first came out. So it's a couple of, couple of years ago now, I suppose, maybe nearly three. Um, I know it was just before COVID because two weeks after it, I caught COVID at the uh, Super Bowl final. I was an early adopter, right? So I caught COVID, but <laughs> just before just before I did this talk to about 400 uh, leaders, all markets, all sectors, all sizes, right? Every shape and size. And uh, I, I asked them, so I said, who here by a show of hands does not have any leadership blind spots? And thankfully... <laughs> They were self-aware enough to recognize that they probably did have some leadership blind spots. So no hands went up is my point, right, John? Uh, Brad. So, so no hands went up and I thought, great, okay, good. We have a fairly self-aware bunch, which is not always the case in, you know, when you're talking to large numbers of leaders. So my next my supplementary question then was, okay, could you just write down what your blind spots are? Now, that, now it gets tricky because... If they knew what their blind spots were, then they wouldn't, of course, be a blind spot. So I, I, the point I'm trying to make, I guess, is that every leader, even if it's only intuitively, recognizes that they must have some leadership. I mean, they're not infallible, right? So what they don't recognize, though, or they don't really quite know how to figure out what those blind spots might be. And the truth is, Brad, nobody, you know, what do leaders want more than anything else? They, they kind of need the truth. Right. Now, people don't tell them the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. They kind of tell them a version of the truth that they think it's in their best interest to have the leader believe, right? So let's pretend they're getting 80% of the way there, right? Um, uh, the fact of the matter is, Brett, nobody comes up to them and goes, hey, boss, you got a minute? <laughs> they go, yeah. And they go, I just wanted to mention that I've been watching you know, your performance over the last six months. And it stinks, quite frankly, right? And I don't think you're doing this. Don't think you're doing that, right? That never happens, right? So unless, unless we can 
figure out how to significantly develop our self-awareness, maybe our EQ and so on, then, then we're going to struggle. I remember I saw a, an interview with um, George Bush Sr., right? So the, the, the dad president. And uh, he, was, he, was, he's, he was no longer in the White House, but you chaps still call ex-presidents Mr. President. So he just come off the 18th green of a pro-am golf tournament and somebody shook the camera in his face and said, hey, Mr. President, how was the golf? And he stopped and he thought for a second and he said, it's amazing how many games of golf he's lost since leaving the White House. And it, it kind of like talks to the fact that nobody tells the leader the truth, right? And everybody lets them win at golf because it's hard to tell someone they've got an ugly baby. So what we do, one of the things that we do is we help leaders figure out what the blind spots are, figure out how to overcome them, I guess. Absolutely love that. So Antonio, it's, these are conversations I'm having daily. And I imagine <laughs> you all listening and watching shaking your heads right now saying, yeah, I wish somebody would just tell either me or tell them. Like everybody has somebody in mind right now. It's like, I wish somebody yeah. would just tell them that, or yeah. how do I, how do I get real information here? So these blind spots are really important. So I love that. Tricky. Antonio, I'm really interested to know for you with your vast experience and all the leaders you've worked with throughout the world, right? What's the best thing for you about being in business? Oh gosh. So, <laughs> you know, decent, there are lots of CEOs and leaders and I wouldn't call them all decent, but the decent ones, I think, uh, that care enough about their people tend to, tend to do better than the, again, it comes back to that, you know, um, emotional intelligence and so on. But for me, helping helping develop people to the extent that they recommend us and our work to others. I was talking just yesterday to one of our clients who owns about 115 stores kind of around New York and Boston and top right-hand corner, right? And um, we were talking about the fact that... Um, he doesn't employ about 250, you know, he doesn't, in his head, he doesn't have or own or manage or control 250 employees, but he's responsible. He feels a sense of responsibility for 250 different families, right? And households and that whole thing. So, and, and I feel the same way about business. You know, that's, we can help families and people. We save companies and there's nothing better. And we, we kind of measure how well we're doing. This sounds this sounds this sounds bad in my head. It's going to sound worse when it comes out of my mouth. But we uh, so forgive me in advance. So we receive, I guess, for the work that we do, we receive two kinds of different tokens of gratitude. I guess one token of gratitude is cash, and we do like cash. So so that's tremendously welcome and thank you very much. But the other one is referrals, right? And and. Both both of those tokens of gratitude tell us that we're doing a decent job and uh, they both tell us that we're making a difference and we're helping people. So the best thing for me about being in business, certainly the businesses that I own, um, and, and ever since I was a child, I was always kind of, uh, uh, I don't want to say browbeaten by my father, but certainly encouraged heavily by my father to uh, uh, own businesses and help people. So the best, the best thing about being a business owner for me is not only the people, the the families that we employ, but the families that we help with the, with our clients. I think. I love that. I, I love the terminology here. I don't want to over, you know, I don't want to just pass by it. What you said, and sure, we in business, right? We're talking business here, right? So, in business, we love cash. Cash is good. <laughs> yeah. Cash is yeah. king. They all say, right? Yeah. That's good. Hey, without you know, without a check or cash or whatever it is, some kind of transfer of funds, like that's that's the lifeblood of business. Yeah. So I love that. But what you called that—that's what I'd like to highlight—is a token oh, of gratitude. Token of gratitude. Well, it is, token isn't it? The other thing that we do in in all of our businesses. Let me just check that I'm not misleading you. No, but in in all of our businesses, we we. Because we believe it so heavily, we actually 
we don't have a contract with our clients. So let me explain what that means. We, we have a kind of a letter of agreement that we'll do these things and you'll pay us this much. But we don't ever lock anybody into a, a 12-month contract or anything like that. And it works on a couple of levels. First of all, it says, we will continue to work hard to keep you with us, right? So in other words, if you're with us on average, and listen, I know on average the Himalayas are flat, right? I do recognize that. But when you look at our clients who stay with us on average about 3.8 years, it means that that they're with us because they're, they are seeing that high return on investment and, and otherwise they wouldn't. So they're not with us 3.8 years because we have them sign a contract for 3.8 years. Now, the reality is it means that maybe some clients leave us after six months, but then some are still with us after 10 years. So, um, so, so, so what does that, so we're grateful for them and how do they show their gratitude to us by staying with us, by continuing to pay us, that's a token of gratitude and referrals. And we have a, 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 a high number of referrals uh, and we measure one of our successes by the number of referrals that people give us. We might not close them all, that's a whole different thing, but if people feel well disposed enough towards us such that they're giving us referrals, then we figure that we're doing a reasonable bang up job. And that's, we work hard to make sure we get lots of those. I love that. Love yeah. that it was about families and not just about the individual. Yeah. Love that it's token of gratitudes. You know, it's not just about the the cash and the transactions and whatnot and, and the, yeah, pearl, the referrals yeah. too. Love that. And the contract, I just want to celebrate you on that and just want to just zip and bypass it because there are very few people that I've connected with that do that. I too do that. So I, I'm, yeah. I'm with you in, in that. Yeah. We want to work with people that want to work with us. And that's yeah. that's a different kind of thought process. So I love that everybody listening and watching that I will think- change the way you do business if you if you change that 100 percent, and i think that it speaks to you know if you have a mindset of abundance or scarcity right and i think that uh abundance begets abundance gratitude gets gratitude and begets gratitude and you know good things beget good things and you help enough people out expect little in return and you'll be amazed how the universe or whatever it is (laughs) whichever god you know you 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 uh subscribe to kind of makes those good things happen big believers in gratitude and abundance love that antonio that's a perfect lead into the next question perfect yeah. abundance we hear from other business owners they're getting so much business sometimes that that causes a little bit of some feelings of overwhelm or stress yeah. when they get yeah. too much business would you be willing to share your thoughts on that topic from your experience yeah, so <laughs> I I uh, I once worked for an organization, big, huge organization. I think at the time I was the sales and marketing director, or I may have just become the managing director or CEO, as you would possibly describe it, of effectively a Fortune 60 company, very large organization, billions in revenue and thousands of people. Anyway, uh, by luck rather than judgment, perhaps, we had done terribly well. (laughs) And uh, when I took my position, I think we're about 40% behind in our targets and scroll forward a year, we're now 40% ahead on our targets. And so I was skipping towards the group chairman's office for my annual review, uh, like dancing on air, thinking this, I was already in my head, right, Brad, spending... (laughs) <laughs> the, the bonuses of the commissions. And I was thinking house in, you know, cabin in Aspen, speedboat. I was like Fred Astaire dancing down the corridor. And I uh, sat in front of him and he said, so how do you think, how do you think the year's gone? And I said, well, I think it's gone pretty well. We did this, we did this, and we did this, we did this. And I could see in his face that this, this was landing a little flat, right? I could see that he wasn't sharing my sentiments whatsoever. Um, and I was <laughs> increasingly running out of steam as I was trying to find exactly the right kind of magic form of words to impress upon him and how terribly well we were doing, right? And then I ran out of steam and I said, so how do you see it, Andy? And Andy said, I don't see it that way at all. Mm. I said, okay. 
He said, look, let me just say this. He said, a business that's 40% ahead of its targets is as out of control as a business that's 40% behind its targets. That was his opening salvo. And I thought, oh, crikey, <laughs> this isn't going to go nearly quite so well as I had imagined. And he said, let's look at overtime. Let's look at lost time accidents. Let's look at on time in full. Let's look at costs. Let's look at overheads. Let's look at production price per piece for a manufacturing organization. Nearly every single KPI had gone south, right? And, and the, the reality is overwhelm, overperformance causes chaos. You know, he said, you're doing, you think you're doing terribly well. But look behind you, there is a wake of death and destruction. And he said, um, uh, the ends do not justify the means. Style is as important as the results. In fact, it's more important. Now, I remember at the time I was saying to uh, my coach, because obviously we're coaches, but I've had a coach forever. And I was bemoaning the fact that I was constantly fighting fires. You know, in the Eisenhower matrix in terms of busy, high importance, high Height, right and all of that stuff i was constantly in high urgency high importance constantly fighting fires every day of the week like everyone's like crazy 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 busy we were kind of like have you ever seen seven-year-olds play football soccer footy right where like the ball goes over there and 22 kids swarm over to the ball <laughs> and the ball goes over there and 22 kids swarm over there and we were just like this from one crisis to the next right and that's we were, I was running a multi billion dollar business like seven year olds playing football, right? Wow. And, and my coach said to me, You know, these fires you keep fighting all the time. So I said, Yeah. He said, Will you do me an enormous favor? I said, Yeah, yeah, coach, what? He said, Just take a look at the mirror, will you? Because that's where the arsonist lives. And I'm like, Racky, he's right. He's right. Okay. So, if um, if you are constantly behind the eight ball, constantly, if you're running your business like seven year old playing soccer, right? Who's who who has to own that? You have to own that because chaos causes overwhelm, overwhelm work life balance. Most of the leaders that we start to work with that are at work, wishing they were at home, and then when they get home, they're thinking about work. I mean, this everything's wrong. And I would say to leaders as well, you know, because you've got to make time for your own mental health as well as your physical health and everything else. And, you know, they kind of sometimes get the physical health piece, but when you tell them what are they actually doing to get, you know, between the ears right, and they say, well, I, you know, they've been moaning for this to do and this to do. And I say, look, <laughs> so I've got a client, I'll quickly tell you. So we have another client, super, super duper client just today. Is there a video? Does everybody get the video or is it just a conversation on this? Yeah, both. Like, yeah, both. Uh, well, well, well there's some audio, but yeah, then I'll then I'll show the we'll one. Encourage them to go and yeah. look at the video. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So so a client of ours just today. I hope you won't mind, but I don't think there's anything in there that you'll get. So on page 302, of my book, right? Um, it says. If you talking to leaders, if you if you can't find time for your wellness, one day you'll be forced to find time for your illness, right? Mm. And then kind of like figure that out. And he says, beautiful. I mean, it's very eloquent, a tiny little bit rough around the edges. And if you're watching Steve, I hope this is okay with you. Um, he says, pick your suck, <laughs> right? Pick your suck, right? So if you can't find time for your wellness, you're going to have to find time for your illness, right? So. As leaders, you're often making the trade-off between one, you know, one difficult decision and another difficult decision. So you kind of like pick your suck. Is it better to slow down a little, organize things a little bit better, structure things a little bit better? Maybe in the short, slow down to speed up, right? Is it better to figure that stuff out, figure all your people out and all your processes and all of that kind of stuff? Because if you're constantly running like <laughs> seven-year-olds playing soccer, then um, then you've picked the wrong suck, right? Because that's horrible. That's a horrible life to live. Right? And I've lived that life many times in businesses, but um, you, you have to own that. You have to own it. And again, it comes back to that self-awareness piece that we're maybe, you know, talking about earlier and maybe again, but um, I think... Uh, 
it's not long. I, when I learned to fly, so long story, but my uncle had an airplane and we had a place in Mallorca. So it was like, take the plane and go, go to Mallorca on holiday and stuff. So I was learning to fly. Whilst ever I was waiting for my instructor, flight instructor to show up, they had certainly in the UK, and I imagine it's the same in the States. So I, don't, I don't know that it's the same. But every air, every near miss or plane crash, right, had to be investigated by the FAA. And then the reports had to be pinned up in every aerodrome around the UK. So I was waiting to get in my plane with a cup of coffee in my hand, right? And I'd be looking at the big notice board and I'd be reading all of the plane crashes right, or the near misses. And as I was watching and reading them, and, and like, it's the dumbest thing, isn't it, to be reading whilst you're just about to strap yourself into a plane. But anyway, that notwithstanding, right, I thought they were fascinating, these things. And if, if you want to know why planes crash, it's not because wings fall off. Wings don't just drop off a plane. Planes crash because the pilots get too stressed and too loaded for too long, and they get overstressed and overloaded. And, you know, one of the things that we tell all of our leaders is to constantly ask their people, how stressed are you at the moment? And how loaded are you? Now, it's OK to be stressed 10, loaded 10 for a short period of time. But if month after month after month after month, everybody is stressed 10 and loaded 10, you have to own that. You, and the plane's going to crash. Right. And that's no badge of honor. Right. So so I, I'm OK for people that say, I like to drive my business. Great. But don't drive it into the side of a hill, right? Because that's ultimately what's going to happen. People are going to leave and turn over and all that kind of good stuff. You know, style is important as a result. So there you go. I heard that you came first first full circle. I was I love that. You nice. heard, I, <laughs> I caught that the first time I was gonna highlight that. And you just did it. That's great. Style right. is just as important. What I really love, and I and Tony, I want to be honest and candid with you. Um, so in terms of that question, which I ask on every podcast, um, yeah. I, I think that you've had I'm setting the bar for people in the future, but that is nice. the best answer I've ever had for that. Oh, and, wow. here's why, and here's why I say that Antonio, because I mean, we get a variety of answers from a lot of different business owners, right? but part of what you said, it was, you know, if you're, if you're experiencing that, you really got to stop and look in the mirror. And that's really where the buck stops. Yeah. If a business is being run that way, if it's high chaos and high turmoil, and we hear all these kinds, I'm sure you hear them too, all these excuses, all these reasons why this industry is like this and this and that, and all these things that we hear. Yeah. But ultimately it comes down to how do you want to run your business? And I also love what your friend Steve said is, pick your sock so it's time, you gotta pick your sock so <laughs> it's time to pick your socks people <laughs> do you That's know what great. that might be quite a nice epitaph actually i'll have to give that some thought yeah i love that uh, it'll yeah. come in your next book i imagine yeah, <laughs> yeah probably. Probably. antonio that's great <laughs> we, we so shifting gears to the next question i ask this of everyone and it's one of my favorite questions because of what we do right but so who else successful like yourself antonio ought to be here as a guest on the unlimited wisdom podcast so i give i you know i i feel like for example steve that we just talked about right tremendous leader tremendously self-aware terrific leader um, I don't actually know whether he would appreciate, you know, people knowing that he's on our, so I'm going to give you some different, I'm not going to give you any clients, right? I'm not going to give you people that give me tokens of appreciation, but I'm going to give you other business owners that I think would be, you know, interesting to your, you know, if people, if you want people to be interested, you have to be interesting. And I think these guys are interesting. So I would say uh, my, uh, my partner in an, another business, I'm in France today, but I have another business in Miami. So my partner, who's also my brother, Carlos Garrido, he's a genius and uh, co-owner of me of a company called Absolute Sales Development based in Miami. He would be a hoot. Um, I think a mentee of mine. So, you know, if you're not mentoring somebody, if any leaders are listening and they're not mentoring anybody, why? shame on you right if think about how much faster you might have 
moved if you'd had a great mentor. But anyway, so a mentee of my chap called Jason K. Wood. He owns a sales training company out of Utah. He's a splendid individual. And so out of respect for my clients, I won't mention those. But then I think Laurie Ames in New York, who, she's the publicist for my books, not only this book, but my previous books, uh, other books. Um, um, she's uh, She's got a rather wacky take on the world. And so if you want a slightly oddball uh, somebody to interview, um, I'd give Laurie a shout, but certainly Carlos and Jason would be, I, I, I would tune in for those guys because they're great. Love that. All of it. Yeah. it. What I love about that question is that's our chance to pay to forward to some other business owners and everything. So nice. I love the descriptions yeah. of what they do as well. Yeah. Antonio, yeah. let's, Let's get to the crux of this, right? So you've already shared lots of value and a couple of tips and tricks, but in your vast experience with all the things you've done, with all the leaders that you've worked with and people you've mm -hmm. worked with throughout your life, mentees and mentoring and all of that, yeah. what's one piece of advice that you would share with other business owners? What's really important to you on deck right now? So super tiny, quick story. Um, about 20 years ago. Chairman, different guy that I worked for, genius guy, genius guy that I worked for. He asked me on my first or second day in the organization, he said, hey, Antonio, do you journal? And, uh, and I said, no. And he looked rather quizzical and asked me why. And I said, probably because I'm not a 16-year-old Victorian schoolgirl. And he then said, he said, okay, okay. He said, well, do me a favor and go and find the 10 most successful people you can in any field, any field, entertainment, sport, anything, right? Business, the 10 most successful that you can. And just ask them whether or not they journal. And I got to eight and eight said that they did. And I thought, okay, there's something in this, right? So I then started journaling. Now, most of our clients, when we ask them to journal, they <laughs> look similarly quizzical because they also feel that they're not 16-year-old Victorian schoolgirls. And they're like, well, I don't know what to write. And what, when, when, how, how long would I write? Where would I write? And can I type it? And all of that usual good stuff. So um, in, in, a, in that, wisdom comes from evaluated experience, right? You're a big fan of John Maxwell. I know, right? And that's kind of ally to some of his thinking in terms of wisdom comes from evaluated experience and not just time served. That our job as leaders, again, comes back to this self-awareness piece is to constantly improve. One of the things that my dad used to also ask all of the kids every week is where did, where did we fail this week? And if we said we hadn't failed, then he said it was a week wasted and mm. big fan. He was a big fan of Mario Andretti, the racing car driver who said, if you're not terrified going through the corners, you're not going fast enough. And so, so this principle of, it's okay to fail, but you've got to learn. So some you win and some you learn, and you have to start recording those things. You have to start evaluating your experience. You have to every day say, what was my report card for the day? I'll give myself a B plus or an A minus. Where could I have done better? Where could I have, what could I have done differently or said better or done better? Or email could have been done better, run a business. When I said this, I should have said that or thought this instead of that. So start journaling. Because this wisdom comes from evaluated experience. That means you've got to think about what you did and how you could have been better. That increases that self-awareness. That helps reduce those blind spots and all that kind of stuff. So if you want to, if that's interesting, simple, not easy. But if, if that's interesting to you and you do care enough about developing yourself, your people in your business and future-proofing yourself, your people on your business, pop along to... All the W's, mydailyleadership.com. We've got lots of free business health checks there. We've got journaling templates, get access to the book. You could even do a leadership assessment to benchmark yourself against the best of the best. And then you'll know <laughs> whether or not there are some gaps, which, of course, Brad, we know that there are. We've just got to be able to, until we can, until you know what the issue is, how, how can you fix it? So go get yourself. You go every year, you go and have a health, you know, health checkup, or at least I hope you do. So get your leadership checked up. Love that. Couldn't love that more. 
So one of the things I love that, and you already said, it, I think twice, wisdom comes from evaluating experience. I want to drive it a third time, right? Three times a charm. <laughs> <laughs> Magic number. No, but I, I, I really do want to, or I should say yes, but, or yes and. Yes. Either. And. <laughs> yes and. Yeah. Uh, I want to highlight that because wisdom does come from evaluating experience. And with the world we live in today, how fast things come at us, yeah. regardless of the size of your business, how are you yeah. filtering through all those thoughts? I want to double down on what you're saying here, Antonio, and yeah. stress to the audience in a positive way. Like, really, if you hear this and you're saying to yourself, yeah, I've heard that before. Or if you're saying to yourself, how you described it, like, oh, that's for that's for younger people or, or whatnot. <laughs> <laughs> then I would encourage you right now in this moment to pause and really think about that and really yeah. check in with yourself. The, the advice you're sharing, Antonio, is fantastic. It's easy to put in play. You can try this today. Nobody's saying like, hey, send me a thousand dollars and I'll teach you how to do a thing. You're saying yeah. like, you, can, you can journal today and you're yeah. giving them tools, tools and direction to be able to do that. So I really want to double down on what you're saying. Sure. Great advice. Thank, Thank you. you. As one personally in support of what you're saying, that's one of the things that is really has changed my life oh really when i when i had that advice and i refuted it and said that i wasn't getting you know i don't need that kind of thing i was that guy yeah <laughs> and i yeah. had a coach encourage me and i began to do that and gratitude gratitude became more prevalent in my life yeah. and my life began to change that was more than 10 years ago so thank god for that yeah 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 so, good stuff thank you for that so antonio thank you simple but not easy you also said that. And I want to highlight that too. Like it is a simple thing, but you know, sometimes those simple things we don't we overlook them. We don't do them. Yeah. So Antonio, what I'd like to do, I'm going to shift gears and ask another question here in a moment. But I, I really want to highlight the work that you're doing in in a great way. Um, in in doing this, and in focusing on leadership, what are some of the things that the people that you're serving, the people that you're helping, the people that you're impacting most, what are some of the big areas of focus that you, that, you know, that you're focusing on with them? I want to highlight so that, so the people watching and listening can say, Oh yeah, that's me. Right. I need that. Um, and what kind so, of campaigns are you working on right now in the market? Yeah. So, so I guess, and it's simplest form. We have a, we have a model for leadership now, you know, you can go along to, any Barnes and Noble, or do they still have those things? But uh, any other bookstore yeah. where there's, go to the leadership section, there's miles upon miles of page upon page of what's leadership all about. And we, we, we have quite a clear view of that. Um, and, and we kind of boil it down to five real key competencies. And each in, in each of these key competencies, there are sub, subcategories. And of course, read the book and we'll explain all of that to you. But um, if for us, our model is nothing is achieved other than through people. So you have to really think about how you're developing your people. So people development is critical. These are no in no particular order priority, by the way, uh, Brad. So so people development, which is like you know understanding motivation, communication, all the way through to co coordination cooperation and ultimately collaboration so how do you how do you get people to collaborate uh masterful mentorship we talked about that slightly how you're helping re people reach their full potential so we have this people development piece give yourself a score from one to ten how well you're developing your people then we have company development which includes boring things like processes and short medium long-term planning and all that kind of stuff so out of ten how how well are you not just running your company not just rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat, Groundhog Day. How well are you developing your company? So there's company development. Then there's self-development. You know, this journaling that we just talked about. And there's how are you developing yourself? It's so, it's staggering. Honestly, Brad, you wouldn't believe it. I'll say to a leader, I'll say, could you show me what it looks like your PDR, you know, personal development reviews and stuff and how well you do that? They go, oh yeah, terrific. I say, okay, great. Show me. We'll go to HR and they'll drop dig out personnel files of people where they've given them scores for this and scores for that. I say, terrific, let me see yours. And then suddenly they're all shuffling their feet and all that kind of stuff because like they don't exist. So how are you developing yourself? You know, it's, I can't abide 
leaders who judge who judge others by their actions and themselves by their intentions. I mean, it just makes me just to just go banana. So self-development, then this strategy development, right? Because your job is to future-proof yourself. The world is changing. You know, you look at the graphs that talk about how technology is changing, how quickly the pace of change. Well, same for your business. And so you don't want to end up kind of in the empty segment syndrome, right? So strategy development. You'll be amazed how poor people are at strategic planning, strategic developing strategic execution mr maxwell again there is nothing in this world as over as over planning is over is over what's the word it's like over rewarded but doing is under is underdone and that's under rewarded right we can all make a good plan but how do you actually execute on the plan that's where people fall down and then the last piece is leadership development are you making more of yourself? The the the, the story I do you, know, do you know David Ogilvy who ran Ogilvy? Indeed. Okay, genius man. Um, when we all die and go to heaven, listen to this. Every time he employed a new leader or senior manager in the organization, he would on you know, for their first day, right when they kind of walked into their office and sat behind their desk. There would be, you know, those nest, you know, those Russian dolls that has a doll inside the doll. Inside. Talk about them all the time. Right. So he would walk in on their first day and he said, you got a minute? And they go, yeah. And he said, you see these dolls? And he would unstack them. Do you know the story? He would unstack them so they were all like lined up in front. And he said, when I talk to leaders and I said, what's the significance of this? Some of them say, well, this is me. And I've got to, you know, then there's that guy, then that guy, then that guy, then that guy. He said, they don't last long in this organization. This is you, this little one. You've got to make a bigger one, make a bigger one, and make a bigger one. And make a... So you're not at the top making smaller ones. You're the smallest one. You've got to make bigger ones, right? So this leadership development. So there's people development, company development, self-development, strategy development, and leadership development. If you think about those five things, almost the exclusion of everything else should be okay. I absolutely love what you just delivered there. And <laughs> how I want to highlight that is I want to encourage everybody to actually go to your website because I've been on the website. I've looked at the resources and the tools oh. and the things that you're offering. You. And I want to encourage everybody to do that. You, that is fantastic. Thank you for oh. that because your illustrations and you make that really easy to understand. Just leadership can be complex. Like you said, there's rows and rows and rows of books. There's yeah, right. hundreds yeah. of thousands of leadership things. Miles. But how do we how do we weed through all of that, right? Like how do we get down to brass tacks? So Antonio, I think you did a fantastic job. Thank you very much for the actionable info. I'm gonna shift gears one last time and then we're gonna wrap this up. So stick with us. Antonio, look, we I'm sure you've shared this. I've gotten to know you a little bit here, and so has the audience, people listening and watching it. And so I would think. I don't like to make assumptions, but I think you share the same thing, but we work to live, not live to work. Right. So I love asking everybody on the show, what's the most fun vacation you've ever had? So I've had, I've seen some stuff. I've been so far flung, terribly interesting and exotic places. One of my absolute favorite, it was a day on holiday, not the whole holiday, the whole holiday was tremendous, but it was a day. It was a day that started, um, so I was with my wife, uh, a couple of the kids, we have four children, we just happened to be with two on this particular day. And we were in Vegas. I'll, uh, I'll explain why in a minute. Let's just so, so locate, we're in Vegas. We got up very, very early in the morning and a limo picked us up, uh, drove us to an airfield. We climbed into a helicopter. We flew around uh, the Grand Canyon. We landed in the floor of the Grand Canyon. We had a champagne breakfast in the, uh, the Grand Canyon. We then uh, left there to go to uh, a Celine Dion concert, mm. which was uh, pretty good in our helicopter. And then on the way back to our suite, 
uh, by wife won on her one and only ever spin of a roulette wheel. Um, when she said, how does this work? I said, look, it's really easy. You just give that chap over there some money, right? Put it in front of him. Say, give me some chips. And then you just kind of like stack them all around. And I saw that she got a couple of hundred dollars. And I thought, crikey, I just didn't think that my wife would ever do such a thing. And she got a big pile of chips and she stuck them all on one number. And I was doing something else. And I turned around and I said, I oh, know, darling, you have to kind of like, and the guy goes, no more bets. I'm like, oh, crap. I better give us some more money. And the little ball went, boom, and it landed on her number, like thousands, right? And then she gathered them all up and went to the cashier and cashed them in. And um, it really was a splendid day from start to finish. Okay, here's, the, here's what made it doubly sweet. The whole thing was paid for by a grateful client of ours. So um, so they put us in the suite. They flew us there. They, uh, they really looked after us. That was another token of appreciation. And uh, yeah, best time. Um, it was a good day. It was a good day. What a fantastic story. I absolutely appreciate it and love your story. Antonio, <laughs> this podcast from start to finish has been fantastic. Look, if you're realizing that you happen to go in full circle now from the beginning, you happen to have maybe a blind spot or two yeah. <laughs> or you realize that maybe you have some some chance to grow in your leadership then antonio is your guy um antonio when somebody listens to this and watches this and they say wow that was fantastic i'm really impressed um you know by that guy and they do their research what's the best way for them to reach out to you listen seriously and i've been saying this for years because i've been interviewed often it's just antonio a-n-t-o-n-i-o at my daily leadership, all one word, mydailyleadership.com. I promise you, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Love that. Antonio, thank you very much for your time, for the chunk that you took out of your day to be here to serve and to connect with other people. I really, I personally um, am grateful for you. So the token of gratitude to me. <laughs> thank you, Brad. I've really enjoyed it. You've let me ramble inanely, and that's my favorite thing to do. So thank you very much, Brad. I hope. Uh, I hope your listeners and subscribers enjoyed it. Pleasure and privilege. Thank you. This is Brad A. Milford with the Unlimited Business Wisdom Podcast, where leaders, seasoned entrepreneurs, and business owners share their wisdom. If you're looking for more on leadership, sales, marketing, or operations to drive team development, higher quality, and high-level sustainable profits, we encourage you to join the Built for Brilliance community on Facebook or reach out to us about one of our mastermind groups, coaching or consulting, or even fractional COO services. You can reach us at buildbrilliance.net slash contact. We thank you for listening, for sharing the show, and appreciate your rating and reviews as this makes more shows possible. Thanks for joining us.